What's going on guys, Bob Roach from RoachTechnology.com here with a very highly anticipated video of Mufasa's benchmarks. And of course when I say Mufasa, I am not talking about Simba's father. For more information on what Mufasa is all about, go ahead and click the annotation you see right now and that will take you to the video where I discuss all of the hardware that makes up this beast. Taking a quick look at the specs, we have 12 cores of Xeon goodness, 48GB of G-Skill memory, as well as an EVGA GeForce GTX 690 graphics card. Now I didn't go crazy with a ton of different benchmarks, but I ran a few that everyone knows and loves, and the first one here is Geekbench. After letting Geekbench work its magic, the number it spit out at me at the end is 22,607. Keep in mind that the stock speed of the Xeon processors is 2.6GHz, I have overclocked it 0.8GHz roughly of course, to about 3.4GHz to achieve these results. I've also run a 24 hour M prime stress test at 100% on all 24 threads to ensure stability. The second and final test I ran under OS X is the good old Cinebench, and as you can see I actually did pull up the activity monitor CPU cores so that we can monitor them in real time. For the purpose of this video, I will let you guys see this in real time, so enjoy the music. After beasting through that Cinebench test, we come out with a score of 17.11 processor points. On the default list here that you get when you open Cinebench, we are indeed at the top, and moving to where you can see the CPU cores, it's pretty easy to tell where the test was being run. Moving on to the GPU portion of this test, I have to say that in both Windows and in OS X, I was actually kind of disappointed at the results of this card. I am aware that OS X does not take 100% advantage of this card, but even in Windows the scores were kind of lackluster, and I will of course get to that in a second. But for now, here are the graphics results. After running the test, we come out with a score of 34.02 frames per second. This is by no means a horrible score, but considering the price of the card, how much video memory it has, etc., I actually did expect better. Moving on to the Windows side of things, I'll be using Windows 7 for the benchmarks, and it's very important to note that the driver software that comes with this card is very important for these benchmark results. This software here is why I believe OS X didn't score as well. As you can see here, the software has a PhysX option, which I realize is more of a gaming feature, but affects the benchmark results nonetheless. By having certain things processed on a GPU core instead of a CPU core and vice versa, you will definitely get mixed results. With that out of the way, go ahead, sit back, and enjoy the beastliness. After running the CPU portion of the test, we come out with a score of 18.62 processor points, which is indeed a little faster than OS X, but I think it does have something to do with that PhysX software. Now let's go ahead and we'll do the GPU portion.
Now here's where the Windows benchmark blows away its OS X counterpart. The GPU here got 44.34 points and as you can see just clearly dominates the OS X portion and once again I do believe that is titled to that specific software that we just do not have on OS X. However, benchmarks aren't everything, they're just a fun number and well, performance is very smooth on both operating systems. Up next is the Windows version of everybody's favorite, Geekbench. Before starting the test, I'm going to go ahead and change this to 64-bit and let's go ahead and do it. And as you can see by the results of the Geekbench, we get 26,403, which is definitely a fair bit higher than in OS X. Once again, I attribute that to that software. I could be wrong, but I did run these benchmarks with and without that software being on CPU and GPU options, and I found that it did affect it on Geekbench by anywhere from 1 to 2,000 points. So this is the best result that I got. The other one was about, I think, like 24-ish, but I decided to go with the 26 one because, well, that's the highest I was able to get. So there you guys go. You've seen what Mufasa can do. Did it blow away all your expectations? Your mind is just all over the walls. Did it maybe not meet your expectations? Could you have done something better? What other components could you have used? The list goes on. I want to know. Let me know down below. I also apologize for getting this video out a little later than I wanted to. Uh, it is after the new year, which by the way, happy new year. I hope you all had a great holiday season. I unfortunately, uh, well I had a great one, but then I, of course I got sick right after Christmas and that kind of explains my slowdown of videos. I've done sick videos in the past. Uh, sick I mean you know coughing and sneezing not sick nasty awesome but uh, and I, I always just kind of didn't like the results I sound like crap so I figured I'd rather just wait have the video be a little late and have the audio quality be a little bit better for you guys so I hope you enjoyed the video I have tons of great content coming for you in 2013 it's gonna be a great year so I know 2012 was an amazing year for my channel I have you guys to thank for that so let's make 2013 an even better year I have uh, my own personal build that I plan on doing I want it to be a six core LGA 2011 build it's gonna be pretty sweet Sweet. But uh, in the coming months, that probably won't be until about summer or so, just till I get all the funds in order. But by then, who knows what will be out. So it's going to be a really exciting year in terms of software and hardware for many different companies out there. Be sure to stick to my channel for all the coverage of all that kind of stuff, computer builds, etc., etc., the usual Hackintosh stuff. Be sure to stick right here on my channel. So thank you guys very much for watching, and I'll see you soon.